to the Esports Connected podcast. I am so excited to have Kevin Pziski and the Harb, Ryan Harbinson. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate it. Glad to be here. Oh my gosh, there's so much to talk about. Um, marketing. We is- only have like an hour, so. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, so I love marketing and um it's amazing very early on how, how much I appreciated marketing and we'll get into that. But first I want to introduce you guys. Kevin Pazisky has launched multiple companies starting with news and entertainment and video production when he was 23, but his experience goes so far beyond that. He's the president of ClearBridge. His branding skills and business services to large and small companies goes beyond his natural talents of insight, innovation, creativity, and let Kevin help you bear your brand. Also, Kevin, you're so great at finding talent. It's such an honor to introduce the Harbinson, Ryan. You know, he has more than 15 years of experience in marketing. He's the business development of uh, business development vice president, right? Of- Dire- director, not yet. So oh, soon. Yeah. Just, I mean, former CEO, Ryan, you have done so much. You have, um, boy, I mean, Funko Land from, uh, oh, and GameStop. And, you know, I, I, I love, I love, there's nothing too large or small. You're a master connector. You never have a bad day. You're on top of the latest trends. You're a publisher. You've published, is it like you've had your hands in over a hundred games? What a, like, oh my goodness, we could go on and on. You're a jack of all trades, a player, a designer. Who wouldn't want you to lead their brand? Um, it's just a, it's just so cool to have you guys both here. Um, what else would 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 you add that I may have missed? Because there's so much. Yeah, I mean, so uh, for myself, like you kind of touched upon that. So my background's in in the retail space. So I started re- uh, in the game space for a long time. So retail was a big part of my early days, and then um, started a de- development company uh, when I was 24. Uh, we've got two games published on Nintendo DS, a bunch of stuff on uh, the uh, the app stores. Uh, we were one of the first uh, apps to launch on the iPad store which is crazy to even think that that was its own individual store at one point. Um, worked for publishers for many years and uh, kind of lived in that like Game Boy Advance, the PS3 realm, um, worked with a lot of licenses and distribution and, and all that. So a little bit of all of it in the game space. And boy, for people you know that are listening and can't see, you have quite a collection behind you. <laughs> of the projects that you have been part of. And boy, if, if I just encourage anyone that's not watching this to definitely watch it. Is there anything back there that's your favorite? Uh, um, yeah, if you look behind next to the Halo helmet, the little blue box is actually our uh, our DS dev kit that we made a couple games on. So it's kind of cool. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Show and tell. All right. Um, Mr. President, <laughs> let's hear from you. Uh yeah, nothing, nothing really exciting. I just, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy marketing. Uh, I love marketing. It's, it's my passion and, you know, I'm not the expert at marketing uh, by any means. I, I have found an amazing team to be able to, um, you know, take ideas and, and just take them to the next level. Uh, brainstorm with with different companies to come up with you know amazing creative um, and really hone in on the target audience but that's that's really my shtick is just finding finding people who are much smarter than me and just letting them do their thing um, that's that's really uh, what it comes down to and how you build a successful business yeah I, I can attest to that I mean your um, your company culture is Okay, for starters, I'll I'll never forget when when we met and I looked up your website and it said something like, we'd love to tell you where your brand needs to go, but in a nice way. And I was like, (laughs) oh man, you know, like the, the, I personally fell in love with your content. I liked the clever, I mean, your website's great. But the the content it's 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 clever it's fun and I was like that's his culture, and mm-hmm. it, it just says it and that that's when I knew I was like this guy is really doing something great and then when you guys had said you had a Chicago office I was like well forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. So yeah, I mean, um, marketing has changed so much, and I, you know, I just have to ask, what, why, and how? Like, how do you get to like create such fun content? So cool. I mean, it's just it's some of my favorite. So go ahead, tell us a little bit about that journey. So yeah, started a I started a digital marketing company uh, first. That's that's what Clearbridge started as, and then really. Uh, we were doing digital marketing in 20, 2014 um, when it was it was something that was a, newer to most businesses. Um, and then everybody started hopping on the trend. You know, everybody was trying to serve as many impressions as possible. Uh, and, and really, I wanted to differentiate uh, ourselves. So uh, we, we shifted to become a branding agency and focus more on the messaging. And the creative, which is much more fun than just, you know, figuring out an audience and, and serving ads um, for most people. For some people on my team, that's that's all that that's all that matters. Um, but <laughs> you know, it's it's awesome to create something and just know that we're going to change a business for the better. Um, and just by just by some catchy phrase or or some eye catching creative, um, it's. You know, when we go into a pitch and we just we knock it out of the park and just know that that's going to that's going to drive an insane amount of revenue for for businesses. Um, that's why that's why I love it. And, and it just made me fall in love with it even more uh, when we see when we see those results. Um, and it's just fun. You know, it's a fun thing to do. It's not um, you know, we, we have a lot of fun doing it, uh, coming up with different concepts figuring out what works, what doesn't work, and then just, you know, optimizing it from there. But starting off as a digital agency, you know, we, we have, we have our roots in digital, which is very important, obviously in today's, in today's world, but that creative aspect is really, really where you're, you, you can shine. Uh, and then applying that with the skill set uh, that we have in digital, um, it just takes it that much further. Um, so. Yeah, I think what we, we do well, Meg, too, is, you know, we, we we love to, like, kind of, you know, we do social, we do websites, but that's not what we want to do. We're, we want to tell a story, like, yes. throughout the year that's kind of phased out, right? And there's so many different areas and opportunities to find the audience and kind of where mm -hmm. they live. And every company is a different story and every company is a different audience. And, you know, the strategy point is really uh, the a fun part, too, because we're trying to figure out, you know, we got this great creative and we've got this really fun campaign that we want to launch, but it's like, where does everybody live? And that's, that's really when we start to kind of, you know, after something gets launched after a month or two and we start to see the gears start to move and we see these great results. It's just, it's, it's really exciting to see the companies we work with, you know, get excited um, or get a, sometimes a little overwhelmed because they weren't ready for all the traffic that we were, we were going to bring in for them. So, um, I was just talking to you earlier at our coffee and you know, this is such an important time for authenticity and storytelling. And that's what I like about your agency. I like that you guys are nimble. I like that you guys are hands-on. I like that you're um, a solution for our members because, you know, I, you know, um, I know you guys are really, learning the goal, learning the brand, learning the company, learning the story, and then telling it on, in, in multi, multiple ways um, on, on every level. Um, so, and then one thing, I came from a publishing background as well. And I remember in my early 20s when I worked at Reed, which is Variety Magazine now, um, there's several other, other magazines, B2B, that I worked in. And um, I remember having a marketing department help me for the first time. And it's unbelievable when a marketing company nails it or a marketing brand nails it. It's just like, Oh, and that's what you guys did your website. And I would imagine there's a lot of pressure because you have to be your own example and always level up. So tell us a little bit about that. Like, how do you do it? Cause you do. So, uh, I mean, our, the, uh, the thing with a lot of marketing agencies, a lot of, a lot of companies who uh, are in the service industries, like 
you know, the cobbler, <laughs> cobbler's kids don't have shoes. So we, we try and update our website as much as possible, but a lot of times we're, we're working on, uh, you know, we're working on everyone else's brand. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's, it's really, um, it's really awesome to be able to do that because you learn about so many different businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have our verticals that we work within, but you know, every, every company is, is different. Every culture is different. So it's, it's awesome to become ingrained in all of those different, um, different businesses and then bring to light, you know, their ideas, what they're trying to, what they're trying to say, who they're trying to talk to. Um, So, you know, it's a very, it's very fulfilling in the fact that, you know, we, we do learn so much about different industries and different businesses. Um, And I think what's fun too is like we get an opportunity to kind of work with uh, uh, people's marketing departments too, which is kind of, you know, the ideal situation because what we can do is, you know, what we see is that a lot of people are overwhelmed just because there's so many things, especially just on the digital front itself. Mm -hmm. And then don't even throw the fact in if you've got, you know, a conference that you're going to go to and now you have to worry about the conference and now all the digital stuff gets put on hold and now you haven't posted in two months because you're working on the conference that you're going to. So like we can kind of come in and just kind of, you know, release some of the pressure and that's kind of really what we we want to do we want to work and like and co-manage with everybody in in the uh, in the company itself so you know what we do really well is kind of work on that you know best in show that that corporate content right and then we allow the companies to kind of look and see what our new campaign looks like what the new style is maybe what the new taglines look like and then they integrate that same style so that we're telling the same story together as a team but we we let them kind of do more of that culture content right so like when new products come in you know the stuff where you're kind of going to be in the weeds but like we can we we can assist with like, here are some blog topics that you guys could help write, or we can assist with that. Or, you know, do you guys have a content calendar? Like, do you, are you planning your posts and planning what your content looks like throughout the months? And that's kind of really where we can come in and, and really assist. And we see people grow because now their list of 40 gets cut in half and now it's a little bit more, you know, manageable and we have fun kind of doing that other side with them. So it's great. So if you're having client like that, how often are you meeting? Tell us about, you know, the journey. Are you meeting monthly? Are you meeting weekly? What is it like when they hire you? What's, what's day one? What is the, what's the journey of onboarding? Yeah. So day one is, um, you know, just a all hands on deck, getting to know you meeting, um, figuring out, you know, points of contact, who's responsible uh, for which department. Um, and then from there we meet weekly, um, we meet weekly for the first few months, uh, with the, uh, with a designated team, um, and then monthly with, you know, the C-suite, um, and then from, from there we switch to bi-weekly and then monthly, uh, once everything's running smoothly. Um, so, but the onboarding process is, is one of my favorites because you just, that's when you really get to dive in and, and figure out, okay, this is what's being said now. This is how we can tweak that um, and, and really just hone in and, and get to work. Um, I remember when you guys first joined and I looked at your team and, and what a group, so diverse from college professors to graphic designers, you know, full-time consultants, international it's, people. It's crazy. I mean, we it's have a good neat. squad. So like, you know, our VP of digital is an expert writer for Forbes. Our VP of strategy mm-hmm. ran national campaigns for KFC and Taco Bell. So we bring this squad that is, uh, is very seasoned in, in the, it industry. was, it was, uh, you know, it was, I was impressed. I thought it was a really nice, uh, reflection of diversity. Um, and, um, uh, I thought they would be fun, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. on point, on point. Yeah, we have, uh, the team has a ton of experience um, in the industry. And that's really what I was looking for when, when I was building an agency, because I, I never worked in an agency before. I just liked marketing. And it's really, you know, I wanted to hire people that could teach me. And that's really what, what it's been is everybody has so much experience and, and has been in the game for such, uh, you know, a long time. And then you also have people who, you know, are, are fresh out of college that just have these skills that um, that are amazing and and 
you know, you, you said one of our, um, our VP of strategy is a for as a, a professor uh, at Temple University and she teaches, she, she teaches design and art direction. Um, so we get to uh, kind of pick off these, these kids that are coming out of yeah. college and got a nice little she, farm she, system. Yeah. She, <laughs> she teaches them and says, this person is going to be stellar. Uh, so we have the ability to, um, you know, w- either watch this person or, or, you know, reach out to this person and offer them a job coming out of college. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's something I'm really excited about as well. Uh, and Deb, Deb, who's our, who I'm, I'm talking about, she's amazing. Uh, she's really, uh, she's really taught me a lot and uh, has, you know, also has the ability to teach others. Um, and she's, she just has so much knowledge. It's, it's incredible. It is, it is crazy. And just like, just from all her experience and things that we are just learning from her, just, and, and the, and the way that she kind of approaches clients is just, it's amazing. Like, you know, uh, internally we call her the the queen of questions because when we, when we bring on clients or we kind of have like early uh, calls with myself and some of the biz dev people, like Deb really gets to the bottom of like things that you might not know that you're saying. So like she'll ask questions and they'll say things and like, we're like, Oh, that's great. Like we can really work with that. And they're like, well, that's not a big deal. And then we like, it'd be like, no, like this is why this is important. And like, we really like understand the brand. And when we get to that point, you know, the experience of the team really does like deep, deep brand audits. And, you know, we run through all your stuff, see kind of what the stories you've been telling before and be like, you know, you guys haven't used your Twitter since 2017. It might be time to, delete the Twitter account, you know, just little <laughs> things like that. But it, and it's great to uh, utilize everybody that's been in the world for so long. And just, I mean, it's fun. And I, I think we're kicking some ass and it's, it's nice. So, you know, I mean, I can just say, even for our website, even for our social media, and thank you for your service on our marketing committee. Um, you know, thank goodness we're launching our enhanced branding um, from all the work that you guys did last year is coming up in the next few weeks. I mean, this is not easy. You guys have looked like, okay, get on this social media, get off of this one. Get on. I mean, we're constantly pivoting. Um, what, what can you guys, I mean, we struggle and we have a committee of 15, you know, of you guys, um, you know, so my thought is if, if, if I were to be, um, having a marketing department, I would want to at least meet with a team like y'all once a month, like forever, mm-hmm. like there it's a, it's a must. It's not anymore. You throw up a website and you leave it. I mean, this is, um, this is <clears throat> dynamic. It, it's a new way. Yeah, it's a full time gig now, and like, and and every you know couple, every half half a year, like all the trends are changing constantly. Yeah. Like, you know, right now the big thing that is like huge is it's all about the engagement factor. I mean, that is kind of where it is, and that's how you can kind of create that organic like buzz around yourself. But it's it's comments on top of comments. It's getting involved in hashtags that are part of your business to try to get involved with those communities so they know who you are. It's also like blogs like what kind of blogs are you putting out so blogs help your seo because now you know it's we use to use it all the time but it's like going down the, the peanut butter aisle and there's a reason that jiff and uh all these peanut butter companies have different versions of the same product because that's more eyes on the prize so you know when you're doing blogs and you're putting out content it's just helping drive more traffic to the site which is really how people find you nowadays i mean and if you don't have a somehow people still do not have websites which is just blows our mind, but it happens or they're not, they're not mobile friendly. Like that is huge. Like if you're still not mobile friendly, like you're not even like on Google anymore. Like they've just kind of discontinued your site because it's not part of the, the new regulations that they've had. Yeah. Um, like Ryan, let's just not step over the fact that our largest, fastest, most engaged post from the esports trade association was you. I think it was your <laughs> post. I mean, let's just let's just put it out there. I remember <laughs> that work the magic. I was like this guy's on fire. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, 
how long did it take you to create that post? I mean, there was there was a lot of love. You know, it, I guess it was authentic TLC. It had to have yeah. been a couple of hours to make the post. I mean, I'm a designer by trade, so honestly, it was probably about a half hour, an hour okay. or so. Uh, okay. But it's but it's all about the strategy and understanding it, right? So like, you know, and and that's the LinkedIn game, right? So like, with that, what we do is, you know, we have this amazing speaker group that we had at the at the last conference so like what we want to do is we want to get in as many lanes as possible in everybody's feeds right and linkedin does a great job of if we're tagging everybody in that post everyone's going to get a notification of that post and all we're asking is everybody does one of four things right like comment share or all the above so when everybody does that then we get in everybody else's feed and all of a sudden now we've got this great organic content that's going out you know, and then while that kind of stuff is going on, we're we're working in the background as ClearBridge, and we're we're finding out who those people are, and we're getting that message in front of them through promoted ads and through search and kind of following people around the internet, and and so it's it's that balance that really we do well. So you do you don't just talk the talk, you walk the walk. And I, I even, you're a lot, uh, like we were talking about in the coffee, John Davidson is like, just wait till Friday. You know, you were like, just wait MVP. And then you brought it and I was like, man, <laughs> you know, it, it, and it's energy excitement, but it is like, I hate to overuse the word often, often authenticity, but it was, it was genuine, you know, and that's why I asked you that would have taken me hours to uh, do. It's all, but that's all about the mentality, right? So, and that's the biz dev world that I live in. Right. And it's, it's, you know, people need to just give without expectation. I mean, that's just the way it works, right? Like by helping everybody else out, it helps everybody grow together. And that's just it's the name of the game. It's as I say all the time, low and slow patience over greed. This is how it works. It really does. I mean, it, it's like the good old fashioned values we were just talking about, right? Cab with our grandparents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's very true. Very true. Um, and Ryan does a great job with that. Uh, you know, the relationships is we're not looking to come in and just like do a project and leave um, because, you know, we, we become ingrained with, with what you do. And that's, that's what marketing is all about is being, uh, being authentic and, it's never uh, it's it's becoming more and more difficult to just simply sell something unless you have an offer um or or a discount um Mm -hmm. so you need to be authentic you need to be able to um talk to your audience everybody wants to know what ceo is is having for breakfast uh everybody is is much you know everybody is out there uh much more in in uh in the public's view so People, people make decisions about your brand based on factors that don't really have much to do with your product mm-hmm. um, these days. Uh, it, it has to do with much more than that. Um, so being authentic and, you know, being, being honest is, you know, one of our core, there, there are core values and, you know, it, it, it goes a long way uh, when you, especially in marketing, because marketing has like, and agencies, a lot of agencies ha- get a bad rap. Um, marketing agencies as a whole get a bad rap in that, you know, we're just trying to come in, uh, tell or work with your marketing team because, you know, we're smarter than your marketing team. And that's, you know, that's not all, that's not the case. Um, you're good at what you do and, and we're good at what we do. So let's collaborate um, and, and come up with, you know, something, something amazing for your, for your organization. Uh, But, you know, it's very important to be authentic and then build those relationships. Um, You know, and that's, that's really getting back to what Ryan, what Ryan's talking about is being authentic and building those relationships, relationships uh, and, and giving uh, as well. Mm -hmm. And I think what we see too is like, it's, it's two things, right? So one is like, it's thinking like the consumer too, right? So like, if you have a heating and air conditioning company, like what do people do? They just type in heating and air conditioning and your zip code. And if they find you, first thing we're going to do is we're going to just look at Google reviews, right? Like, so like if you have low Google reviews, we're like, Hey, we got to get those up because we want to tell that story, right? Because how many times have you not either bought something or have not gone to a place because of what other people have said? Right. So that's that's a huge part. And, you know, when we help people grow those brands and really tell that story and the content's nice. 
we build these amazing relationships with our clients and then our clients become our best referral source, right? So we have, we have grown our, our book of business just through referrals through other clients and companies that we've done great work for because, you know, in our world, everybody's been burned by marketing and branding people. Everyone's been overcharged and, you know, it's very hard to find the honest mechanic mentality, right? And, uh, that's us. So we we are very straightforward. Uh, we want to tell you what's going on. You know, if our strategy changes a little bit, like we're not going to just like hit the Facebook button and then say, all right, well, we'll see you next month and be like, oh, well, Facebook didn't do well. And it's like, well, this one did better than this one. So we want to move this over here. We're seeing that this hashtag is working better over here or, you know, whatever, whatever it is like, hey, video is doing actually way better than posts for you guys. So right. maybe we should invest more money in video to kind of get that buzz going more. So it's I all love different that. for everybody. The whole seeing it through, you know, Professor Deb, you know, bring it her to the meeting, you know, you're, <laughs> you're not going to get past her. Okay, so here's why you're on the show, though. You can't fake passion like we got it. You guys are a great brand um, marketing partner. Got it. And why you're here is because Ryan at least I know for sure, you just love esports. So let's talk about what you can do specifically for our community. Yeah, Kev, you wanna start? You want me to go? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Ryan, go off on me. Uh, you know, I, I think this, I think what's, what's nice is that we started as a digital company, right? Everybody so we, grabbed their coffee. <laughs> here we go. So <laughs> we, go. We, uh, we started as a digital company and you know, Kev and I are, have, are very aware of of just the digital space, right? And you know, esports is kind of uh, clumped in with us in in the world of esports and gaming and AI and the metaverse and NFTs and blockchain and crypto. Th this is all the future of where we're going, and and we love this world because we love where it's going. And what we're seeing is that there's an education factor that is really rough right now right so with the with the older uh you know the younger gen x and and the older millennials they are some of those people are still kind of confused on what is happening right so like right. we want to come in and and work with companies same deal that have existing departments that we can come in and kind of co-manage things with you guys together but really help tell that story and and maybe dumb it down so it's not all lingo talk Right. I think that's yes. a big part of it, too. Yeah. Um, I think esports in general uh, has a bad uh, rap just because it, they, they only think it's Call of Duty and that's it. Right. Or maybe pick an, one more big one that the average consumer is like, oh, it's Fortnite and Call of Duty. That's all anybody plays in esports. And there's so much more to it. And I think educating those people, but then also like highlighting everybody that's on the teams. And now with all the stuff that like companies like Fit Gamer are doing, where they're kind of like integrating like the days of Mountain Dew and Doritos are way gone. Right? right. And like, it's all about mental health yes. uh, because when we hear like, Hey, Oh, I'm going to be training all day. People are like, Oh, you're just playing video games for eight hours. And it's like, well, actually we have an hour meditation session. Uh, right. I have a, I have a, I have a chef that makes us, or at least gives us like a whole like catalog of food and what to eat. And like, I think that's really fun things to do. And there's yeah. so many people that are not working directly with like Activision who's Microsoft now uh, and other companies, right. Uh, that are kind of independent that are also doing more like as we've talked about this before too, like, you know, there's a whole other world of like PS three and down. That is so great. Like why can't we help people that maybe only do NES tournaments and all we do is super dodgeball. And how do we tell people that story about maybe more independent groups too? So it, it, the, the technology and all that fun digital space is kind of where we shine and we really, really love that. Love that. So I know Kev has more to say about it as well. Yeah. And it's, it's not just, it's not just the audience that you're, you're trying to go after. It's also, you know, putting out the right messaging to investors, um, being able to speak their lingo, um, putting together investor decks, uh, talking to, uh, putting together board reports. We do, we do all of these things that are kind of above and beyond just, you know, posting and, and advertising. Um, so these, that, that's where I think we can truly add, add value to mm -hmm. a lot of the organizations uh, is the ability to uh, attract, not just, uh, not just the audience that you want to uh, play, play a game, but also investors and, you know, the right, the right type of people 
um, that you want to be involved in your organization. You know, it's so interesting that you mentioned that because we have um, an elevator pitch here. You guys were there at the conference in uh, uh, September last year. You're coming this year in August Mm -hmm. and we have an elevator pitch. And when we receive the elevator pitch applications, the first thing I look at is the marketing quality of the deck. Yep. And I mean, it's just me. Like I am in love with good marketing. And I, and I'm, and I'm not saying that I'm the best or my websites are the best at all, but they're very good. I, I, I pride myself on do on, on presenting quality pieces my, and in my view and many people's, they, they say they're decent. So I, I feel like I have a decent eye, but the deck means so much that mm-hmm. it's just polished, like, like good marketing you don't know why it feels so good or why it looks so good necessarily. Like a five-star hotel, you walk in the lobby and you're like, you don't know why you like it. It's, you just like it. But you're willing to pay a little bit more just for Mm -hmm. that. Exactly. And when you don't like something, you just don't know why. I'm just saying like you, meaning like just people, right? Like there's just well done marketing. So my goodness, if you're going to spend 50 hours creating a business plan, why wouldn't you budget in some money to have the presentation be polished? And I think part of that too, Meg, is this, is like, and and I think you make a great point. Like it's important because think about this, right? So you spend all this time, you have a great product, you're kind of lost in the weeds and you're going to get, you know, a million, two million bucks to to push this out. And then you don't have an, I, an idea on how to market this item that you just right. received all this money. And now you're on the hook with a bunch of people. So what happens is that we come in, we help you with a couple of things, right? So one is is the presentation deck itself, right? So we do some amazing design. We make it look great. We keep, we keep it on brand. Maybe we help like refresh the brand a little bit as well too. But the mm-hmm. other thing too is that we can help with strategy and what that execution looks like, right? So we want to start small and then go down from like the whole East Coast. And what we can do is we put together those budgets on what that would cost to do that. And then you can also utilize our team as part of your deck because now you've got this marketing team in the deck and it makes the investors feel a little bit more comfortable. And we already know what the cost of our services are going to be. They're going to be integrated into the deck. So when you get paid, we get paid, and then we can already hit the ground running. And it makes everybody feel a lot more safe. <laughs> and that's really what it comes down to. And the investors know. They know um, professionalism from amateur and they want professional teams. They yeah. want to see professor Deb and her <laughs> student from Brazil, you know, it, you know, that that's doing the latest metaverse graphic. That's the coolest thing ever. You know, the, 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 they just know people, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like make, make the relationship early. Uh, I mean, years ago, people used to say, make sure that you're, you're, you know, close with your bankers and you're close to your attorneys and you're close to your accountants. And I'm like, and your for me and your marketing department. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and just, and it's, it's, it's fun to do those. So we'd love like that, like either first or second round of investments because they're really starting to make some noise and it's fun to see them on the ground level and then see the success after we kind of help develop that. And that's, that's always fun for us. We love to see things get launched and, you know, we've done a handful of uh, startups as well and really helped them grow um, over the years too. So it's, we're no stranger to that world. So that's really, really great advice. And I just love um, seeing our members come with an idea and, you know, just to be quite honest, I haven't seen your, your company help a member or a, yet get their funding. So that'll be a, a wonderful evolution um, for me to see. And I'll be happy to recommend you guys because that that's a journey. I mean, it's 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 so important that they when they get their first round that they also market properly. So why not get you before they get the round? Well, and the risk already that's being like taken by them, right? I say it all the time, one of the worst diseases you can ever uh, suffer from is what it could have should have, right? So sure. when they when they take that leap and they take that chance, you know, it's it's stressful and it's it's crazy. And we can we can just kind of help on the vision because you know you get lost in the weeds after a while too, and it's sure. it's you know you lose sleep and it's like oh my god, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? And then we can kind of come in and kind of you know 
help you settle down a little bit. Very, very early in my career, uh, very early in my early 20s, did I part? I partnered with um, the marketing departments because I started off in sales and um, what a difference it made for me. And so I, I never forgot the lesson. It used to be that, and I don't know if it still is, and I want to talk about that next, like what is next? Um, but it used to be like marketing budgets were always cut, marketing, you know, forget about it because the salespeople, they sell. And that was just yeah. like the old way. And I never did that. We're music and arts. That's us. <laughs> we're always, say? We're, I said, we're music and arts. We always get cut first for some reason. I don't know yeah, why. I know. I know. And, and, but, but it's changing now. And I that's why I want to talk about why is it changing? Why, what shifted? Why is storytelling so much more important than like, why is, I mean, t- you guys talk, tell me about the evolution. You guys are the pros here. It's, it's simply because there are so many more stories out there and you have to cut through so much more clutter. Um, and it's the same with our industry. Like everybody, everybody is a marketing expert out there. Uh, everybody, everybody in your feed is trying to tell you how they can get you so many leads, how they can do all of these things. Um, and, and it's the same uh, with a lot of industries. You know, everybody is an expert and it, it has turned into this, you know, loud minority of people uh, who, who are just, you know, they are, they are great marketers. They are able to get themselves in front of you. Um, And that's what it's about. It's about eyeballs. But a lot of times, a lot of times the, um, a lot of times the investment that you make in marketing is something that you, you know, you need to see a return on. So when they're, when they're going out and, and talking about themselves, it probably, you're, you're probably not going to get the same attention paid to uh, your brand that they pay to their brand. Uh, it, right. And it just is a lot of noise out there that you need to cut through. Uh, so that's why, that's why it's more important than ever to focus on what your message is, how you're going to resonate with your audience and you know, how you're going to get that message out there. Um, and it's, it's really you know, about setting yourselves apart. Um, you know, it, it's a, it's a tough thing to do when everybody is, is out there just barking and screaming and yeah, it's, it's incredible. I mean, you gotta be patient as well too, right? I mean, there's so many more platforms than there were five years ago and that's, and that's a huge part of it. Right. And the platforms are changing immensely. Like when somebody does something, everybody copies it. Right. So like when Instagram made stories and they were the first one to make stories, Within a year, LinkedIn had stories, Twitter had stories, Facebook had stories, TikTok is now doing their thing, and then everybody else has all these shorts. So now YouTube has shorts and Facebook has shorts. So like when a trend happens, everybody copies it because that's what the people want, right? I mean Instagram alone, we had to realize this, right? 23% of users have between 10,000 and 100,000 followers. And 26% of users have over 100,000 to a million. So almost half the platform is influencers selling you things. So that alone is so much noise, right? And everybody is just trying to sell everybody everything. But what happens is that everyone's doing a big blanket, right? So what we kind of come in is, as Kev said, we're doing more of that, that pathway, We know where everybody's at and we're just kind of throwing elbows and kicking everybody out of the way. And, you know, we've got our shields like 300 kind of making our way through the pile. And that's the story that we tell. Right. And it's it's again, it's the patience factor like that comes over time. But when people find your content and it's fun and it's not always like buy my book, you know, people want to know who you are. But it's again, it's just there's so much noise. It's crazy. It really is crazy. (sighs) I like, um, you say, buy my book. What do you guys think about books? What's next? Are people writing books anymore? Is podcasts the thing? Should we be at? I, you guys tell me. Kev, I could just tell you're ready. (laughs) So what's next? I mean, that's a tough, that's, that's tough to answer, but it, it really is. I always say you need to be, you know, you can't just focus on one avenue. Uh, you need to you need to have a message, and you need to make sure it's consistent across every platform that is relevant to you. Um, so, just 
having a dedicated strategy and making sure you're on as many platforms as possible is a realistic next, I think, for people. Okay. You know, it, it's it's not necessarily realistic for everybody to hire a bunch of creators in-house just to focus on TikTok um, and, and just have... You know, I've seen I've seen teams that are that really push the boundaries. Like I don't know if you've seen like Duolingo with what they're doing with their TikToks. Uh, it's 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 funny, it's engaging, and it, it's just kind of breaking down the barriers of the corporate industries and and being mm-hmm. more authentic, like we talked about. Um, but just you know, breaking down barriers between you know how businesses used to be run, how marketing teams used to run. Um, and, you know, you know, pushing the envelope, I think, Mm -hmm. and, you know, people don't, you know, it's, it's more, uh, acceptable to, um, you know, curse a little bit, be just interact more, uh, how you would just talk to, you know, your friends, your buddies, um, you know, that type of messaging is, is more and more acceptable and more and more relevant. Um, and, it, it all goes back to how to resonate with somebody. Like if you're, if you're trying to talk and, and, and sell somebody something that's in this, um, this area, this generation, you want to talk that talk as well. Um, mm-hmm. And you want to make them comfortable with you. So that's what, that's what I think a realistic next is, but a lot of, you know, everybody's running to the metaverse right now. Um, and brands are trying to figure out how to, how to break into the metaverse, how to advertise within the metaverse. You know, we have, um, we've been approached by many companies that are trying to sell, sell ads within, um, within some of those environments. Um, and is it right for the clients that we have? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. And what's the percentage of people that are actually in those yeah. servers that, out? Exactly. And that's, that's a lot of the questions that these brands have that are going to be working with a lot of, a lot of esports um, companies is, you know, what's the what's the return? How do we track this? Um, how do we figure out if it's if it's working or not? Um, and you know, that's that's a challenge that I see that, you know, we can uh, I think we can help navigate um, because you know we work with big we work with big brands all the time. Uh, we know what they're looking for. We know what metrics they need. Uh, so we know what to go into a pitch with uh, if you're trying to get a sponsorship. Um, so that's it. It, it really is. Um, it really is different, and, and it, it is changing so fast. Like just just looking at content alone. Like my, I was <laughs> I was building something with with one of my kids, and they. Uh, they said, I want to do a video about this and he's five years old. And, uh, so he takes, he takes my phone. He does like, a uh, he does a video and he ends it with like, and subscribe. And I'm like, what the hell are you even talking about? Like, and subscribe to what? <laughs> not even on any platform. Smash that like um, button. Smash that like for more great content. And, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And that's really, you know, what we're trying to get ahead of is just these kids that are even five years old are able to make, able to make content and, and frankly, you know, buying decisions, um, yep. they can, they can influence buying decisions. Um, okay. Wait. So, so your son, hold on. He's five years old. What's his name? Uh, uh, Roman. Roman did a video he of did. building a toy. And at the end of his video, he said, like, and subscribe. I mean, that <laughs> is just, yeah. you know, you must be very proud. It's because they be watch so know, much YouTube and everybody right. says it. I don't know if I'm a bad parent because he watches so much YouTube or like, if that's just the future and that's it. like, if that's what that like is so, doing him a it's disservice. It's so funny. Like how many times, I mean, when I was growing up, I remember my mom looking at me when I said something that she said that I shouldn't have said, mm-hmm. you know, you're, that is just a great story. Uh, like, and subscribe. So I think, and with that, you know, I think and this is kind of where I see the trends going too. I think what we're seeing, and we've seen it really kind of explode over the last like three or four years, right? Is that fame is achievable for everybody. 
and and that's really what it is, right? So we're seeing the creation of micro fame, right? So like you can have like a million subscribers and you're the king of yarn, right? And you can go to Walmart or Target and nobody knows who you are. But if you go to the yarn convention in wherever, you have a line out the door and they paid you 50 grand just to be there. So that is a huge thing that we're seeing, right? And it's also the uh, exclusive content that is funding their themselves, right? So like Patreon and all these other things are huge, right? So people create their own websites where you join for 80 bucks a month and maybe you get like, a, you know, a special tchotchke thing. Uh, and then what happens is that you get exclusive content because you are part of that. So YouTube and Rumble and Venmeo and all these like, video platforms are allowing these people to put their content on those pages and maybe you get a 45 minute show that they do daily and then they say all right we're going to go behind the paywall so see everybody we're going to do another half hour we're going to interview this guy and since we're not on youtube we can do whatever we want because we don't get kicked off by youtube right or you know if you're on the patreon we'll do x y and z and then you see things like cameo coming out right now cameo is like hey i'm a b-level celebrity and people pay me 50 bucks to say happy birthday to kevin because i was on some show in the 80s that he loves and well, here we go. So it's like this this micro fame and fame is just achievable by everybody. And it's also becoming like a micro influencer within your communities, right? So like you're saying about podcasts, right? So everybody has a podcast, which is I think great because you can find your interests in everything, right? So a classic story. There's these lawyers that wanted to do a podcast and no one wants to listen to a podcast about law. So they sent a survey out to all their clients, and they found out like like 73% of their clients all love golf. So these three lawyers did a golf podcast, and they crushed it and got so much work from being like the golf guys that everyone utilized them for their law services when it made sense. So I think it's that is part of the, uh, the gist is, again, coming back to what we talked about before, is like finding out where your audience is. And it's not by my book. It's remember me when you need me instead of hard selling the people. And that's part of it. All right. You guys are two of the most passionate guys. You make me think of the Mark uh, Twain quote. What is it? Like the two best days of your life are the day you're born and the day you realize what your purpose is. And I would go on to say one more thing to Mark if he was here. I would say the, the third is really finding your passion because you just can't teach it. Right. There's and you guys just have it. I guess there's not much of a difference between purpose and passion. Um, so, but still you guys just have so much energy and excitement naturally. It, this has been such a great show. Um, the best thing I've done was this show for the association and the community, mm -hmm. literally. And Think about um, how many people found out about you guys just from a friend of a friend mentality. Totally. And we, our strategy for the show was just for members to share their stories. So exactly what you said, you know, um, and the last was ever to have me host it. You know, we had hosts already. I, I showed up just because it, it worked out easiest for me to show, but I wasn't planning to be the host of this, but it's, you know, it's, it's just interesting how things just work when you have passion, you want to communicate a message about what you're up to, even if it's golf. Yep. I mean, like we see it all the time, right? Like, so like you can like secret sell to people too, right? So like you could deal with thing where maybe you have an insurance company and you're telling some story and nobody cares, right? But if you got your dog with you and maybe you're having a conversation with your dog about the insurance rates that you're doing, people are going to watch that because it's that borderline of that culture, corporate content kind of mixed together. So people, I mean, Kev knows this too. We were saying like the best, the best content on TikTok right now is seven seconds, seven. So that's where the mentality is. So it's quick and dirty content is, is where it's at right now. I mean, like for website traffic, if you get like 30 seconds on your website, crushing it, crushing it. Because people are in and out. They want, they won't, they know what they want. They find what it is and then they leave. And they're moving on to the next thing. I mean, how many people 
on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. I mean, pick your, your platform. How long have you gone down an hour long, nothing hole? And when you're done, you're like, what did I even look at? But that's, that's the state of affairs right now. Yeah. That's why it's so important to be memorable. Yep. And I don't know how memorable we'll be on this, but. <laughs> well, yeah. So as we wrap up, I mean, who's not going to want to call you guys? Let's talk about, you know, what are the next steps um, for our members to get a hold of you? What do you guys, you know, give us some parting wisdom and some parting words. That's Call Harb. He's a <laughs> man. Call Harb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, we love to chat, have a conversation. Um, I think part of it, what kind of separates us from everybody else um, is that we, 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 we thoroughly care about what we do. Um, and it's all about, you know, uh, helping each other out too, right? So like, you know, if there's opportunities, you know, for you becoming, you know, a client of ours, you know, the biz dev process doesn't just stop because you signed on the dotted line, right? So now you're, you're part of the, the family. And now what happens is that you get access to my network, Kevin's network, and, and the whole team's network. So when there's opportunities that make sense to help your business grow, you don't we don't charge you for that. We're not like, oh, well, we have a premium package where Kevin and I will make three introductions for you weekly, and that'll help you. Now, we, we do that because we want to help you grow, and we want to see that happen because it's it's just all about the giving mentality. And we want to we want to give you our services, but we also want to help you, you know, organically make new connections. And I mean, I think that's a huge part of it. And I think too many people give and then go, Hey man, I I given you three, you know, where's my two. And that's just not the way it works. And I don't know. We have, we have a lot of fun and our culture is great. And uh, you know, everybody's doing, doing fun stuff. And I just, I guess that's really it. I, I know it's simple and easy, but it's the way it works. Well, and, and you guys are the real deal. You know, you've come out to Chicago, you have an office here, you're great members, you guys donate your time. You've really helped us. You've walked the walk and uh, talk the talk. And it's wonderful. It's, I, we can't thank you enough as a community. Thank you for being part of the show and, um, and, and just part of the esports trade association. Thank you. Love it. Love anytime, it. anytime you want to talk games, let me know. I got the TV over here. I got 12 systems hooked up. Let's go any day. That's great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Ryan Harbinson and Kevin. That's dizzy. <laughs> That's dizzy. It's so easy. Kevin's it's very dizzy. easy. <laughs> Clear Bridge. Clear Bridge Branding. Check them out. All righty. And that's Thanks, another babe. episode of Esports Connected. Bye.